Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here to show you how to make the Edith blanket. This blanket is created by using the entrelac technique and we are going to do that from corner to corner. The colours I am using are Starcraft Special Decay and they are my Orla Keeley inspired colour pack. And the colours are mocha, storm blue, duck egg, parchment, meadow, mustard, khaki, lime, spice, tomato and pistachio. I am using a three and a half hook for this blanket. I always use a three and a half hook for Starcraft Special Decay. So it is prescribed as a four, but use the hook that you usually use for this yarn. Then, of course, a darning needle to darn in your ends and some scissors. Now, you can make this blanket in one color as well, you know, um, because the structure and the texture of the blanket will allow for an interesting look you can of course use your stash colors you know you don't need much per square so you could use this as a stash buster blanket and of course you could also make it in a variegated yarn and i would be interested to see that effect but having said that i am going to be changing colors every square so you could change colors every row but i wanted to keep it interesting and i wanted to keep it so it looked like more of a patchwork blanket so let's get started okay let me show you how to do the initial square and at the same time i'm also going to explain how to do the actual square so we are doing two rows one row of double crochets and one row of boxes and we keep repeating those so let's get started for the initial square you are going to do a slip knot insert your hook and you're going to chain 18 so yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 18. <laughs> okay, I was going to keep on going then. 18 chains. Then you are going to indeed yarn over and you're going to go into the sixth chain from the hook. So you don't count the loop on your hook, but you do count your V's one, two, three, four, five. And this is the sixth one. You go into there and I always pick up two loops and you do a double crochet. And this is your first box made. Now you are going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And you keep on going and a double crochet is yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two chain one skip one and then you have one left here and that's where you will do the last double crochet of the round there we go okay so you now have seven boxes made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you are going to start row two, chain two, turn. So this chain two counts as your first double crochet on top of that last double crochet of the previous round. Now we are going to do double crochets, first of all, around the chain space, then into the double crochet so around the chain space 
into the double crochet around the chain space into the double crochet so you go around the chain and you go into the double crochet picking up the two v's And so you make sure that you do 15 double crochets. So one is your turning chain. So that counts as the first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And of course, here you also have to do one on top of this chain here because of course one of those chains counts as our chain for the box. And then the other chains here count as our double crochet so each time you do this row make sure you have 15 double crochets and you have done enough at the end here to make sure you have your right number of double crochets then you're going to chain one two and three two of those are going to be for the double crochet and the one is already going to be for the chain so you turn and now you're going to skip one and a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. We are making a row of boxes again. So you chain one, skip one, into the next one, a double crochet. Chain one, skip one double crochet in the next chain one skip one double crochet in the next and once again here you have got to make sure one two three four five six you've got your seven boxes so i've only got six boxes so i know that here i have to create another box so chain one and then skip here the two chains coming out because those were your turning chains and go in the top of that to create your double crochet and of course your box okay so each time make sure that you have the number of boxes and the number of double crochets that you require for each row row four one two three four we are going to repeat row two so we're going to make double crochets so two chains term and then you're going to place your double crochets either around the chain space or into the double crochet there. And so these are the rows for the squares that you will be doing each time. And now chain three turn and we're making boxes so skip one one double crochet in the next chain one skip one and one double crochet in the next and so on and of course here making sure you've got that stitch here to skip but then of course you've got your chain go into there i always try and pick up two strands so it doesn't expand and there we go so i've got my yeah seven boxes let's do another row two so chain two and we are going to place double crochets all along i mean it's a lovely little square to make even though it's made in little rows it's so easy to do this, so easy to check how many stitches you have got and how many boxes you have got. So for this square, you are going to do three rows of double crochets and then four rows of boxes. So we need one more row of boxes. So three chains, turn, skip one, double crochet in the next. And then we are nearly finished with our first initial square. So we are going to finish our square 
lay it down like this, cut off the yarn. We're going to pull through the yarn like so. So we finish the square on the initial square to get started with a starting square. We are going to do this different from all the others that we are going to be doing. So this is only done once like this. OK, so you finished here. You're going to go to the other side and start here. So I insert my hook. I have just chosen the next color blind dip, basically, and I'm going to pull through the yarn like so. Then I am going to do 18 chains. So one, two, three, four, 17 and 18. Now my square is turning around here below, but I will make sure that I'm doing the right thing in a moment. So make sure you don't lose sight of how your square is moving about there. So now I'm going to get started on this chain here and I'm going to do a double crochet in the sixth chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yarn over and into the sixth chain and I'm going to do a double crochet. So that is my first box made. Now I am going to continue making boxes. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next chain, chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet. And I'm always picking up two strands there. There we go. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. And now for my seventh box, I'm going to do my chain one, skip one. And then I am here in this V here, in this chain here. And I am going to do my double crochet, but I'm only doing it half. Then for my second pull through, I'm going to start attaching it to this previous square. So yes, it is in the right direction like this. And instead of just yarning over and pulling through, I'm going to yarn over through the adjacent square. So I can see here there's the V. So I'm going to go in there, pretend I'm not in there. And now I'm just going to yarn over and I am just going to finish my double crochet. So look, I have attached my double crochet onto the adjacent square. Now, the next row, we do a double crochet row and that starts with two chains. So one chain and then the next chain, we are going to do the same thing. So we are going to go through the next location here. So make sure each time you're at the height of that double crochet. You should be working at those heights each time. And I'm just going to do my chain, but I'm going to incorporate the adjacent square. Then it's time to turn around because obviously I am doing my row of double crochets. So I'm going to just start doing those. I've done the first chain, which counts as a double crochet. And now I am doing my double crochets as before around the chain space or on top of the double crochets. So this is now really doing the square like I have shown you in the initial square. OK, so this is the end of my row two. I've got 15 double crochets. Now I'm going to start row three and that's a boxes row. So I am doing my seven boxes. So now really we are doing exactly the same as we did in the initial square for the rows of double crochets and the boxes, except each time we are going to be adhering them to the previous square. So I have done my six boxes here. Now for the seventh box, we are going to adhere it to the adjacent square, but I have to find a good location to put my double crochet and putting it here will just extend this hole. So I've been putting it in between here where nothing is going to extend. 
So you do your double crochet only half. And then for the last pull through, you are also going to incorporate the double crochet on the adjacent square. There we go. Then you chain one and for your second chain, you are going to incorporate the adjacent square. Turn around and then you do your double crochets. So the rows of double crochets and the rows of boxes that you do really are the same as we have done in the first square that I've shown you. But it's just the adhering to the side square that we need to get used to. So for that last double crochet that we are going to do of the boxes row, you yarn over and I place it in here, just below where I have attached there. And that way it's not going to extend anything. And then the last one goes through the stitch here. So you're lining up your rows with the boxes of the last row of the adjacent square. Then you chain one and then the second chain you do through the double crochet to get your height and to attach it. Then once again you turn and you're doing your double crochets. Okay, so making sure I have all my stitches in every row. I see I have done three rows of double crochets. Now I'm on to the last row of boxes. So three chains and off I go doing my row of boxes. Ready for pulling through the last pull through. But of course I have to go through the top here, which would have been the corner of this square. So instead of yarning over the mocha, I am going to get started with my new colour and I am going to pull that one through. There we go. So I'm just going to pull the mocha a little bit to tighten it all up. There we go. So now I'm going to cut off the mocha. And now I am going to be doing the next kind of square and because this is a short row we will be ending our row straight away here so there are no middle squares to do so I am going to do an ending square now I find if I do a chain three because we are starting with a boxes row my box is slightly small so if I do a chain four that makes sure that my box is the same size as all the others. So I am going to do a chain four and then I'm going to go along the side of this square here to start doing my boxes. And I have to have seven boxes, so I have to find seven locations. You will be doing this quite a few times, so the locations will be quite straightforward, to be honest. So I do a location here. Here, here, that's three, four, five, six, and then in the corner here. So really, I mean, they are obvious locations for us to put our double crochets in. And that will make sure you have same sized boxes. And also those are the sizes that you will need to do. So each time you are going to do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet chain one and you move along your row here and after a while you will start easily recognizing these locations and it won't be very hard to do and then of course here in the corner this is where I started there we go into there off we go there we are okay so there are our seven boxes 
and now we are going to be doing a square but this time we are not attaching it to anything apart from here which we've already done so we're not attaching this square to anything on the side so there is no square to attach to so we are just doing the normal rows where we are doing double crochets 15 of them yes counting the chain two as a double crochet and then of course the other row where we're doing the boxes seven of them And I need to do one more in that starting chain here, picking up the necessary strands. There we go. And chain three, turn, boxes row. So I have finished my ending square. And as you can see, this is row one and it goes like this. Then this is row two and they go like this. So the next ones will go like this. So we need to take our work and we finished here. We're going to turn it over to make sure that we are in the bottom right hand corner. So from the top left hand corner, we go to the bottom right hand corner. And this is what we are going to do every time we start a new row. Okay, so let's pull through the next colour. I'm using tomato. Pull it through. There we go. And then cut off the previous colour. And now we are going to do a chain of 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 17 and 18 and the same thing again we're going to do a double crochet in the sixth one one two three four five and in the sixth yarn over double crochet and you do a double crochet to create your first box chain one skip one double crochet in the next and so on so this is a starting square we are creating our first row of boxes so I've done my six boxes now for the seventh one chain one yarn over ready to do my double crochet going into that last stitch of my previous square to, for the base of my double crochet and then for the top of my double crochet I'm going to go into here and finish off my double crochet there we go so we have attached the two then we are going to chain one and then do a slip stitch or finish your second chain going through the adjacent square turn and now you're going to do your row of double crochets i mean this is the same as the mocha square that we just did so you start with your chain 18 and then you do your boxes and your double crochet rows each time adhering to the adjacent square So as you can see now, I have finished my starting square of my row three. Now I'm going to be doing a middle square here and then another ending square here. Here my square is going this way, here it's going this way, then it's going this way again. So they are always alternating. So okay, I'm going to pull through my new colour and this square that we are going to be doing now is going to be a middle square that means it's going to be in between a starting square and an ending square here in the middle 
but also each row you will be doing more and more middle square. So you, you will be doing one starting square, then more and more middle squares, depending on how wide your blanket is already. And then you end your row with an ending square. So here again, um, I'm doing four chains because otherwise my box looked a little bit smaller than the other boxes and then yeah let me cut off the tomato first so that end is out of the way and then we are doing the same thing as we did when we started with our ending square so we are going to find those locations to place our double crochets for our boxes row and like I said, you will recognize the locations quite easily after a while. So we are creating seven boxes in this location here. We will have four colors coming together. So you're going to be placing your double crochet low enough so nothing extends to the first half of your double crochet. Then for the next part of your double crochet, Incorporate it into the adjacent square and complete your double crochet. So this way we have now started a new square. We have had adhered it to the bottom here, but also we are adhering it to the side. And now we are just going to be doing our rows like we are used to and each time adhering them to the side of this square. So we are doing a chain one. Then the second chain we do into the adjacent square, you turn, and now you're doing your double crochets. So here we are, I've just completed my square here. I haven't completed the last pull through because of course I'm doing that in the next color. So let me cut that off. So this was a middle square. Now I am going to be doing an ending square. So I am going to be pulling through the next color. And I've picked spice, pull through, there we go. And once again, I am going to do my four chains, one, two, three, and four. Just pull this tight a bit. And off I go again, doing my boxes row. So double crochet into those locations with a chain in between. And as there's nothing to adhere to here, it's just a straightforward square after this. So doing the double crochet rows and the boxes rows. OK, so I have finished this ending square here. I'm going to cut off the arm. Haven't pull through the last pull through. Now you're going to go from top left to bottom right. Okay. And we are going to get started again here with a starting square. So I've chosen mustard this time. So once again, pull through the color. I mean, you could just change color every time you turn over but this is what I'm doing at the moment. And now I am going to do 18 chains. Three. Okay, so I've finished my starting square, cutting off the yarn, pulling through the next color. And here we go, inserting into the corner of the adjacent square, pulling through, there we go. Once again, I'm going to do that chain four, and I'm doing my double crochets along the base with chain ones in between. And this is a middle square. Now this row, I am going to be doing two middle squares. Like I said, each row, you will be doing more and more middle squares. Okay, so I've now finished the second of my middle squares in this row. And now I am going to be doing an ending square. So 
link into the adjacent one with my new color there and I'm going to be doing that chain four and then double crochets chain ones for my boxes in the locations as indicated. So I have now finished my ending square and I have finished the row. So now you're going to be taking that and turning it over like so and then you will be starting all over again with your starting square, middle squares and ending square. And you keep doing this until you have the width and height of blanket that you want. Then you're going to decide to decrease. So you're not going to be doing longer rows, but your rows will start getting shorter. So how are you going to do that? So when you have done that last ending square and you have decided that you are going to stop increasing, you're going to pull through the yarn like so, cut it off, and then you are going to do the same thing. So you're going to do that turn, but this time, instead of starting here with our chain and adding on here, we are going to get started here and do a middle square. So I'm going to bring through the yarn here. I'm going to go into the chain, bring through the yarn and I'm going to do four chains. And then I'm going to do my boxes along the side of the square here, as we have been used to. So now I have started the square on top of this last one here, instead of next to it. So now I'm going to complete this square and then of course I'll be doing middle squares here. So I've just done a middle square here. But I'm not going to go on and do a ending square because I am decreasing. So what I'm going to do is turn over my blanket. I'm going to finish my square. So finish the yarn here, pull it through. There we go. I'm going to turn it over. So into this corner here, I am going to start with a new color, middle squares to the end of the row. And this is how you are going to keep on doing your decreases by doing middle squares. And each time you will notice you will be doing less and less middle squares. So I'm just finishing this one here. There we go. Then, of course, cutting off the yarn pulling it through and then look I only have yes three more to do so I'm going to turn it as usual okay so I have done this middle square here finished it off and now yes 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 here we go <laughs> I'm so happy the last square and that. and then of course as you can see here yeah there's ends I am going to do a separate video about the ends because I have a lot to tell you about the ends okay so let me just do this square here and then I will show you how to do the border so I am just doing the last stitch here there we go Cut off the yarn, pull it through and of course sew it in. I have sewn in all the other ends so I am really pleased about that. And of course now we are going to get started on doing the border. Okay so let's get started on the border. I'm going to be using duck egg. And you make a slip knot, insert your hook, 
and we are going to get started on a corner because that way I can show you what to do straight away. So I'm going to be doing the first row of half double crochets. I generally don't use double crochets because they yeah, make your border more likely to be wavy. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm just going to insert and I'm going to do my first standing half double crochet. Then I am going to place my stitches along the side, but you have got to try and put as few stitches as you can possibly get away with. If you put too many, again, you will get a wavy border. So I am going to leave a considerable amount of space in between my stitches. See, look. And yeah, so there's two here on the height of this. Then there's one on the height of this double crochet. See, so I'm not always going to be putting two stitches at the height of a double crochet, basically. So there, I think that's OK. Um, you know, obviously, when you do the long row, keep laying it down. Keep making sure that you can still lie it flat. If it still lies flat, that's fine. If it starts puckering up, undo that bit and redo it with a few more stitches. If you see it's wavy, undo it and do a few less stitches. So this is your chance to make sure that your border is not going to be wavy. So enough space between the stitches. So now for the corner. So I've already really done one here. So this first one here could be considered one from the corner. Then I'm going to do another one in there. So a half double crochet, one chain and another two half double crochets. And this chain space here is where we will be putting our next corner for the next row. So make sure maybe you put a stitch marker there or make sure you recognize it. So then once again, I am going to do half double crochets. But here as well, you know, although it's easier to locate them here because we're working on top of the stitches, do not put one in each stitch that you see here because that will be just too many. So I am going to do, you know, maybe three per four stitches. So I'm I'm sort of skipping one stitch somewhere. Um, yeah, lose as many stitches as you dare to lose. I keep repeating myself, I know, but that's the only way. Make sure you don't have a wavy border. So good luck going round all the way. So in the corner where you know that you have to do a corner, you do two half double crochets, one chain and two half double crochets. I will see you when I finished this round. Okay, so I've made it to the end of the row here and I am going to be doing a slip stitch into that first stitch that you did. There we go. And that's how I finished the row. So yes, I have been very, very... Um, careful with placing my stitches and making sure that I didn't put too many and it's just you know just lying flat and that's fine so of course of course you might have spotted it I have started the rest of the border as well so now all you have to do is put your stitches between the bodies of the stitches in your duck egg row I have been doing the three colours at the same time and that gives you straight away the idea of what the border looks like. But also um, you can keep laying it down and you can keep looking at it and making sure that it goes flat. And yeah, you can straight away assess whether this border is going to lay flat because you're finishing it in one go. So I do about sort of you know a good 20 centimeters then I pull up my loop and I go back to this color here um, I mean do it one at a time of course but you know I'm just far too impatient so I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching and there will be some footage of the blanket in a moment see you in the next video bye